Today's episode of Pencil vs. Pixel is made possible by Media Temple. Get 25% off your first month of hosting and sign up today. Just use code PVSP. All you have to do is go to pencil versus pixel.com slash media temple. Welcome to Pencil vs. Pixel. My name is Caesar, and I have the pleasure of being joined today by Sam Sophus. Hey, Sam. Hey, how's Welcome. it going? Going great. Welcome to the show. Thanks. So Sam's an app developer and designer. He's built apps like Cheddar, a to-do app, and has developed developed apps like Shares and Rune. So Sam, before we continue, I'm going to ask you what I ask all my guests. Pencil or Pixel? Pencil, I guess. Okay. Most of my uh, like ideas or to-do lists or whatever, it's all like with a pen and paper. Sweet. Okay. It's a good I way to know. start, right? <laughs> I mean, I make my living via pixels, so I guess it's, I don't know. It's tough. Sam, I've given a little background about you, but let's get to know you a bit better. Go ahead and, uh, go ahead and tell us what you do. Well, I'm a iOS developer primarily. I work with some other folks doing consulting for various people. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that full time for a while and I don't know, been programming for quite some time. What did you do before uh, you started getting into iOS development? I was a full time PHP developer doing like web stuff. And I'd done like some Mac development kind of for fun before iOS came out. Uh, then when iOS got announced, I was like, oh, this is pretty neat. And just because I wanted to make Apple things, I didn't really no, no one knew. Like we didn't have the app store. Like no one knew apps yeah. were gonna be huge. Um, so I like first app came out and was kind of like, oh, this is a big deal. So I started doing that a little more. Nice. For a lot. When you got started, uh, was it pretty tough getting getting into iOS development? Yeah, definitely. There wasn't like any resources really. Um, like you weren't allowed to talk about it with anyone until it came out. Um, and like it was so new, like no one was really. Now, like, if you have a question, you can usually Google it and find an answer. But at the time, it, you know, no one was doing this yet. You'd be like the first person ever to find this problem. You're like, well, crap, you gotta just sit here and like fight through it. Did it take you like hours upon hours to get just small pieces of of uh, during the development process executed or done? Yeah, most definitely. Like now, since I've been doing it for so long, I've encountered like a lot of like most things so it's like oh I've done this before here's how to do it or I have a friend that's done it before or whatever but at the time I was like you know there's maybe like 10 other people in the entire world doing this and they can't even like talk to each other like by law so um, just like all right let's sit here and like figure it out uh, there's a lot of like well darn go to lunch and like randomly like oh I have an idea and, like run back to the office and like yes it totally works or well darn back to fighting with it so Let's talk about teaching. You you recently started a project that um, shows anyone that doesn't know about iOS development how to build an app in about three days. Can can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, um, I had an idea to make a course to teach anyone that like had never programmed ever how to like go from zero to like submit an app to the store. So. Um, I like, sat down and, and showed another guy how to like do all of it and recorded the whole thing and like put up the videos and code and everything. Um, and it was amazing. Like people were replying on Twitter like, "Hey, I've never programmed." And then like weeks later, here's a screenshot of my app. Like, it's in the App Store now. Like, you know, I didn't know how to make things and now I can make things, which is like super amazing. Like, you know, to empower them and the feeling for me it was it was great. Since you started that that project. Um... Do you, do you still see yourself continuing to teach in, in other ways maybe or uh, start doing, beginning, beginning to teach courses on this stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I learned through all of it. I really like, like teaching because I had never really done much before. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not involved with 
that content anymore. But um, yeah, I definitely love to figure out what that is. I mean, if it's making more things, a lot of people were asking like, well, I want to learn this specific thing. Can you like explain it to me via a course? Um, so maybe, you know, more specific teaching and less like here's just all the general things. Um, I don't know. A couple of people asked for like one-on-one -on -one teaching. So, or like, you know, go and teach a company or something like a small, like 10 people or something. I don't know. So yeah, I don't know what it looks like. It's definitely something I like to explore because it's something I've never really done before. And I'm like learning how to teach, which I mean, I really like learning. So it's funny. It's like real meta, but it's good. Nice. Do you, do you ever wish to continue uh, teaching by maybe creating a, a, an online course with, with videos or, and whatnot? Yeah, so I recently recorded one at Treehouse, which was nice. um, a really good time. Yeah, they're super awesome. Um, they're, it's funny because like my little thing was like, you know, I'm just like editing it by myself in Final Cut. And I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> and there's like, you know, they have like four video people in the room. And it's like super professional. Um, when we were recording the screencast, like my stomach was growling like before lunch. And we had to like stop recording because it was like picking it up. <laughs> it's like really awesome. Like all their gear is incredible. But um, yeah, I definitely love to do my own little amateur version of all of that at some point. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things that no one really teaches. Like Treehouse is great and I love those guys, but, um, but any online tools, not, I mean them, not them included or specifically rather, um, don't teach you like more real world things. It's, you know, more of like, okay, here's like a really basic version of how to, how to do something. And I think my class included, I taught there, it's like, you know, here's a basic version of how to do this. Um, but I think applying that to like a real app or showing like more advanced things for like, okay, you've started iOS, you've kind of like gone through all the stuff you can online. Like now you want to do like, you know, some custom controls or like really crazy animations or, you know, whatever. Um, a lot of that's hard to get going because it's a lot of just like silly little tricks you learn along the way and not stuff you can just like go read. Um, so teaching that kind of thing is kind of interesting. Um, teaching from like beginner is kind of tough for me. I'm, I'm I think that's the, probably the worst part of that other course I taught. It was like breaking down like what is a variable and like yeah. really basic things. Um, I find I enjoy it a lot more once you kind of like okay, well you understand all the tools. Like let's now learn the cool stuff. So yeah, I love I love to make some things. I have a couple like courses in mind. I might put out just like another like hour or two thing of like some more advanced things and see how it does. Now besides courses, do you uh, have any other apps that uh, that you would like to work on or or build or something that you might be currently working on that you could talk about, of course? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm working on a weather app with uh, my friend Karim. Um, he's, if you're not familiar with him, follow him on Dribble, he's incredible. He's like the number three most followed person or something ridiculous. What's, like, what's, what does he go by? Is... I think it's just K-E-R-E-M. On uh, Dribble, might be his little, might be his last name too. Uh, yeah, just okay. K E R E M. Um, the guy's a man, super cool guy. Um, yeah, so I've been slacking on that. He designed it like forever ago, and I just like been busy with other things. So really excited to finish that, and uh, I'm working on a Markdown editor for Mac called Whiskey. Um, I really like Markdown like a lot, so I'm making the editor I've always wanted. Um, I actually started writing it on a plane when I was working on the treehouse script because um, <laughs> I was like procrastinating working on my treehouse thing and was yeah. like I'm just going to go make a Mac app for Markdown and then I did and edited the rest of the script in the editor but, um, so yeah I've been working on that in all my free time lately um, that's basically it I guess so what, what uh, programming language do you build things like that on like it's all Objective-C Objective-C yeah yeah, because it's, it's just like a Mac app. So it's real similar to iOS. Um, and I definitely plan on reusing all of the like Markdown things because there'll be like an iPhone version at some point. So, um, and iPad, of course. So. That's awesome. Do you, do, you, uh, do you program in other, other languages besides? Yeah, I do a lot of Ruby as well. Okay. Um, I used to do, like, like when I do web stuff, it's all uh, Ruby on Rails. Um, so I have a lot of like Ruby things I like to play with that aren't really Rails related or web, just like 
Uh, I have Sonos speakers in my apartment, and I like control those with Ruby a lot, just like for fun. This little little thing I've been hacking on. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I really like Ruby's probably my thing, favorite language, but Objective C pays a lot better because people want iPhone apps. They don't really care about <laughs> nerdy Ruby things. So, um, yeah, it's good. They don't care about uh, websites anymore. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Wired said the web is dead. So, and I was oh. Like, uh, but I, I still do a lot of web stuff. Like uh, Rune is the center app I work on um, with Drew Wilson. It's a blogging app. Um, so that's obviously very web centric. But um, I don't know. I I like like making APIs and stuff in Ruby because I don't have to deal with browsers. But then when I have to deal with like, oh, it doesn't work in IE or Firefox or something, it's like I just hate the web. So I don't know. I prefer to work on iPhone and Mac because I don't have to deal with that silly like dumb stuff. Have you ever thought about working on um, Android? No. I mean, that's. I guess it's not totally true. Like, I tried to learn a couple times. Like, just I watched a bunch of Treehouse videos, and I was like, cool. Like, I kind of I made an app. You press the button, it like changes stuff on the screen, whatever. But I don't really understand like how everything works yet. I haven't spent enough time with it. I'd eventually love to port an app I've made to Android just to see if I can do it. Maybe shares since it does so well on iOS. Um, I don't know. Amazon even called me and asked me to port it to Kindle. And I was like, I don't have a Kindle. Will you give me a Kindle? I'll try it if you do. <laughs> they're like, no, we can't do that. And I was like, so you want me to just like learn Android and port it and you're not even gonna like give me a Kindle? And they're like, yeah, sorry. It's like, all right, well, I'm not doing that. So is it like totally different <laughs> on, on Android than uh, iOS? Yeah, I basically have to start from scratch. Um, I mean, like, there's things you can do to reuse stuff between the two, but most of those, like, produce really crappy apps, in my opinion. So, I, I, I just, like, do it from scratch in their language, which is Java on uh, Android. Hey, this is a question that I, that I tend to ask regularly on the, on the show. Um, can you tell us about a time when something, something just didn't go right? Let's say in your development process, maybe, or, um, you know, really with anything, uh, you just sort of, you know, fell flat on your face and uh, well why don't you tell us what happened and um, how did uh, how did it all get fixed at the end sure well I guess most recently it's probably easiest to, to talk about um, I'm working on this app for a friend it's called lightly l-i-t-e dot l-y uh, it's like photo filters they're um, super amazing but anyway um, I'm working on this iPhone app for like the iPhone version of these filters and I've done image processing like a ton. I used to work at Hipstamatic. That was kind of my first like claim to fame, I guess. Um, so I've, I've spent a ton of time building image processing stuff. And his app was just like really slow and like just wouldn't, uh, it was just really bad. And I was just trying to figure out like, why is it so terrible? How can I fix it? And I probably spent two whole days of like fighting with it off and on, like still couldn't figure it out. And then Saturday, I, I just like started over like deleted everything, new project, and then like a couple hours later I had all of it working and then just brought back most of the old code. So like four hours later or something I had all of it like rewritten from scratch and working and um, like the image code, obviously all the UI and stuff I reused, but um, I don't know, it was really good to kind of just like step back and have a fresh start and a fresh look at things and it made it all like you know, the things I was struggling with didn't really have anything to do with the problem I was trying to solve, so um, kind of just focusing on what I needed to figure out and then doing it made it like, I don't know, it sounds like really obvious, but like I hadn't done that in a while and it was like a really amazing experience, so I'll probably do that more often now. Uh, Sam, what, what advice do you have for someone that wants to create their first app? If they, um, they have absolutely no app experience, um, they only have an idea. What, what would you what would you recommend for that person? Yeah, so pick something to work on. Um, if your idea is like really crazy and like would be hard, um, I'd suggest to pick something easier. So like pick something that you can make in a reasonable amount of time, so you can actually like finish it. Because um, if you don't, then you'll like get discouraged and quit. Probably. I mean. That's what I do with most things. If I start a project that's too big, I'll never finish it because I'll just get bored of fighting with like the tedious things and not actually working on the fun stuff. So yeah, pick something small that you can like finish, 
and then um, like start learning. You know, if uh, I wrote a post uh, on my blog a while ago called "How to Learn," and it's just uh, okay. I want to make an iPhone app for like let's say a to-do list or uh, a photo app or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter. Like cool. Like okay, how do I make iPhone apps? Google it. Like oh, I'll need Xcode. Okay, install Xcode. Okay, like how do I? What I don't even know what is it, like Objective C. I guess how do I even do that? Cool, Google it. There's probably a book or tutorials or videos or things like Treehouse or whatever. You know, like okay, like next step. How do I like show a list of things? Okay, Google it. You know, like oh, I need tables. Okay, let's learn about table views. You know, like um, kind of just like as you're going, learn what you need to learn. Don't like sit down and like okay, I'm learn everything about iOS and then I'll begin. Um, like the college approach of like learning. Because it's really, really terrible. You'll never get anywhere, and you'll just like quit and give up. Because learning for the sake of learning isn't really fun unless you're excited about it. Um, and if you're trying to make something, then you're not excited about learning for the sake of learning. You're excited about making something. Um, so learning just a bunch of things isn't really useful at that stage. You just want to like make something to prove that you can, and then you know go from there. Awesome. Very cool. Sam, do you have any book recommendations? For a designer or an aspiring, aspiring designer or aspiring developer, or maybe even both. So there's this book called iPhone Programming. It's by uh, Big Nerd Ranch. Or I guess the publisher is by Aaron Hill, I guess. Um, I haven't actually read it, but I read his Mac version of this book like way back in 2006. And that's how I started learning. I had never written a line of Objective C um, or Mac development or anything, and like learned and made an app and sold it and whatnot. So. That's what got me going. I assume his iPhone book is equally good. I've heard good things about it. I haven't read it personally though. Um, so yeah, I guess that's my pick because he does a really good job of explaining things. Awesome. What about uh, what about a piece of software or something that helps you with your workflow or um, even with with programming in general? Anything that uh, helps you out? Yeah, there's this app called Dash that's really amazing. Um, it's like a documentation viewer for all kinds of things. I mainly use it for like iPhone things, but um, yeah, it's like really incredible. So it like has really good searching and tabs and like it's, um, you can like it falls back and search the Stack Overflow if you haven't, like if you can't find the answer, it's, um, it's really great. I use it like all day, every day, so dash. Sweet. Sam, do you have one last piece of advice to, uh, for the aspiring developer, aspiring designer, someone that would like to go into app development. You should do it. Not think about it or talk about it or maybe I'd like to. Go do it, like right now. Stop listening immediately and Google how to make an app or whatever you're trying to do. Like just start. There's no like thinking about it, just start. Very awesome. Uh, Sam, where, where can we find you online? I am at Sophus on everything. S O F F E S. My web my website is S O F F dot E S. Um, Google thinks my website's in Spanish, it's terrible. Um, so uh, yeah, that, I'm Sophus basically everywhere. Awesome. And everyone you'll be you'll be able to find that and everything we talked about uh, in the show notes on pencil versus pixel dot com forward slash Sam Sophus. That's S O F F E S. So pencil vs pixel dot com forward slash Sam Sophus. Sam, man, thank you so much for taking the time and being on the show today. Thanks for having me. This is great. Hopefully someone out there stops listening right now and starts <laughs> building an app. Yes. <laughs> Let me know if you do. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. And um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.